Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and this is the Halloween Challenge Skull Crusher presented by Devil's Details Diecast. He sent out five of these castings to us YouTubers, um, and we're going to be building them and giving them away. So, this is my take. Um, I was a little... A little concerned at first, uh, trying to come up with an idea. I started this project about a month ago when the challenge was initiated and I received the casting. Fortunately, I had my own casting as well. So I'm looking through my box of weird random uh, yard sale items and trying to come up with something that might work to try to make this thing stand out just a little bit more. Um, more, I guess, inspiration. Um, so I kind of like kind of like these wheels on the uh, cement mixer. I have no idea where the front of it is. Um, so I start by pretty much disassembling the the skull crusher. It's kind of a cool casting. It's got a metal base. It's got a plastic um, piece. I would say interior. It's like a glass piece plus the actual skull. Um, so I kind of have a vision, and it took me a while to get to that vision. Um, and this video kind of chronicles that pain <laughs> or trial and error, I guess you could say. Um, I have this idea about having these two back tires on the back um, real close together. So in order to do that, because of the way it was, I have to drill out all the way through. Um, so I did that, and now to get them as close as I can, I have to cut the tabs off at least one side to be able to get the wheels to sit as close as possible. After that, I have to decide how I'm going to go through these wheels and um, make it so that it, it'll fit. And you'll you'll kind of see once I get a little further along. Um, so I have to step up the size of the axle. Um, you know, I drilled a pilot hole and I kind of stepped it up until I found the right size that I can stick a piece of uh, brass tubing through. So I kind of have it mocked up. You can you can see it right there. And I picked up a ton of these diaper draggers, uh, the most useless car in the world, except they get some really cool motors. So I am taking that and I'm going to incorporate the motor into the middle. In order to do that, I've got to cut the casting in, in half, well, I'd say in half, but I've got to cut a section of it out. Um, this is very deceiving because the the bones that go down the side are actually um, molded together at the bottom. There's a gap at the top, and then as it gets towards the bottom, they're actually um, it's it's the plastic's touching, so it's not like individual bone pieces or ribs. I guess is what they're trying to simulate. Um, so you have to cut and separate those, what, like what I'm doing right there. Because when you go to cut it, it'll break, and that's what happens. So that's why I'm fortunate to have had a second one um, to be able to piece. So I've got the uh, blue and the green kind of mixed together there, you can see. A lot of my uh, stuff like this, it's all mock-up. It's trial and error. See what's going to work, what's not going to work. And it's it gets... <sighs> There's so many ways you can do do things when it comes to Hot Wheels and customizing. Um, I, I try to go with what works the best, um, and it's functional as well. Initially, I thought of trying to do these two rear tires, and you can kind of get my vision right here, what I'm trying to do. I thought if I could get them together, and I'm using a piece of uh, axle wire right now, or a big piece of axle wire, and I'm trying to visualize what it is I'm going to be doing. And this is, you know, mock-up number one, technically. So I'm just trying to get a good idea of how it's going to sit. And I was kind of hoping maybe I could figure out a way to make it um, almost like a suspension and it would kind of flex up and down. But being so far behind the vehicle, it tended to... Uh, it flexed too much, and there was really nothing to prevent it. And there was, without building something on top, it was going to be kind of a pain in the neck. But my vision's starting to come. But 
the good news is, well, by doing this, I kind of came up with another idea. So I decided to get some, I got some 1 16th square brass tubing, and I soldered that together. I kind of doodled it up on a piece of paper. Um, so because of the width of the tires and then the width of the back of the skull crusher, I needed to build it out a little bit further. So because it's, the wheels are much wider than the actual rear end of the vehicle. So I'm smoothing out. There's a couple little nooks and crannies and tabs that needed to be taken off. So in order to, to do that, I needed to step out the actual tubing. So I've got, I want to say it's 1 8 or 3 16th. It's pretty thick styrene that came in the assorted pack. I haven't had a need to use it for anything. I actually needed to double it up. And these are going to be my spacers on the side to help build out the rear end and make it pretty much as wide as I need it to be to house the wheels and still have enough room for the wheels to kind of roll and move in between. Kind of a pain in the neck, um, but gluing them together, then I glued them on the side and it worked out good. I had the perfect spacing. So here I'm taking that brass tubing and I'm going to solder it together and I figured that would be a suspension. It's very strong. The solder does work excellent. Um, I didn't really like the look. It was too flimsy. So I ended up, once again, um, I get some front wheels off. They're real riders as well. I don't even know what I, I think I got them from Treads. I have no idea what they were off of. They were a single, so it worked out good. But now you can see I've kind of stepped it up to that same 3 16 styrene. I'm kind of making my own rear um, rear suspension the toughest part of doing that was making the two pieces identical. I can make one of anything, but when I try to make two of something, it turns into a shit show. But a little bit of filing and sanding, and it worked out all right. Um, then trying to line the holes up so that I have my axle in the same place and it's not cockeyed, um, that was the next step. But these are going to actually get mounted on the outside of those blocks that you can see on the chassis now. Uh, and the spacing worked out perfectly. So this thick styrene, even though I haven't had to use it, actually had a, a purpose. And you can see right now it's going to fit a piece of 1 16th axle al tube, which is the uh, k &S brass. What's great about this is I really wanted to do a, a, a just, you know, some really great YouTubers doing this, uh, plus some other Halloween builds as well. I'll put a link down below to um, diecast out um, devil's details diecast and you can check out all the videos um, through him here i'm going to put a little bit of putty just to kind of smooth things out because it just didn't look all that great with the two pieces actually three with the um with the actual suspension but what's good about this is i really wanted to do something out of the box and it, this casting really threw me for a loop it was just one of those castings like what the hell am i going to do so I put it aside for a few weeks. You can see I got a brand new mat in the meantime. Um, I wanted to do something that was really going to stand out and something because I'm giving these away. Every one of us who's doing this challenge is giving away their car. And what's going to happen is today is the 30th of October. On the 31st of October, tomorrow, anybody who's commented down below is automatically entered and is a... Um, random YouTube comment generator thing <laughs> that we all use um, that works perfectly for um, just picking random con um, comments. So make sure you comment and you could win one. Uh, comment on all of our videos and you have a chance to win each time. So here I, I spray painted the skull and the, the, the rib cage um, with the, I believe it was the Tamiya white. Then I took some, um, trying to remember, it's Citadel it's something bone color and then I washed it with the Agrath Earthshade. I decided to go with this Retributor Armor Gold and I, I don't know why I think the black and the gold just kind of looked um, it wasn't like outlandish here I'm highlighting a little bit of white on the bone just to kind of bring it back and add some highlights to it <coughs> excuse me but the gold I just thought kind of offset 
um, personal choice, I guess. Uh, I could have gone silver as well. Um, but I just thought with the color of the bone, it just really, I think it matched. So I'm detailing that motor as well with the same gold, just as the engine block itself. Underneath the car, you can see there's actually some bone um, that's cast into it that's supposed to be, I guess it's supposed to like wrap around or something like that or be underneath. Um, so I'm just doing that in white. Then I'll do it with the same bone color and the same Agrath Earth Shade to make everything kind of match. Once all that's together, I'm going to use these little beads to, I didn't want to, I, I didn't get rid of the actual tabs that hold the wheels in and on, a, on the front being a metal base. Um, there wasn't a lot of room underneath. So what I did is I just cut a piece of um, piano wire that's that I use for my axle tubes. And all I'm going to do is glue the little, um, <laughs> the little beads on. Uh, it works out fine. Um, I wouldn't do it on most projects, but on this one, I think it works out okay. And that allows me to just slide the wheel through and then glue the other side. That way I don't have to cut or make an axle tube. So essentially what I did is I took my 1 16th brass k &S tube. I stick it as my axle through both wheels and both pieces. Then I put a piece of 1 16th. Actually, I don't even know what size it is. It's the piano wire. I stuck that through as well. Um, and that's going to be, um, it'll have a point a little later on. Also, this assorted pack, and I swear by these assorted packs, there's a lot of good stuff in there. Um, this red um, clear styrene, I cut a few pieces for the eyes uh, because I wanted to have red eyes because it's a skull and it's Halloween and it's evil and I wanted to scare people. Um, the milliput I made, I used it to fill in the gap underneath the skull that was originally a clear glass or whatever colored glass green blue um, it also served to help seal the skull to the chassis and i just etched some lines in it so it kind of blended in with the skull and i'm going to end up painting it to match then i took my citadel skulls painted them white those are going to go over where my axles stick out also the same treatment with the uh, Screaming Skull. That's the name of the color. <laughs> I knew I was going to remember it eventually. I saw it. Um, so I do white. And then I'm not I'm not painting it solid. I'm just going through and I'm, and I'm hitting some of the low areas with the Screaming Skull so that the white kind of pops a little bit. And then I'll mute it all again with the Agrass Earthshade, which is a brown wash. The one thing I don't like about the Diaper Dragger is the top of the motor. I happen to have this um, air cleaner. Um, I don't know where I got it from, so I highlighted that with gold, and I put that on as well. I was really dreading doing this project. Um, I mean, I was down, down for the challenge. I love challenges, and I'll, I'll do as many as I possibly can. But this vehicle was just one of those. I just sat there and looked at it and looked at it and looked at it. Could not figure out what the hell to do with it. Um, so here is some k &S thin brass sheet. And I want to make a spoiler or a wing for the back. So I kind of mating it up to the right size. And I've got this um, torch that you use more for cooking. You can braise a souffle if you'd like, but I'm using it to kind of discolor the brass. And at the same time, I'm making it a little bit pliable. That allows me to bend it to shape. And then when it cools off, it'll actually, it'll retain that shape. Um, so I'm using an X-Acto knife because it's got the right radius that I was kind of looking for. And then I'm just going to trim the edges so that it uh, is the right size that I'm looking for. I'm going to glue that on. And it's going to be pretty much done at this point. I got a nice rolling vehicle. Um, I really like this. Um, I hope you guys do as well. Um, and then really once it's at that point, I'm just going to do some finished touch-up work. Um, I always go back over everything um, if I missed anything. And I'm going to add a little bit of um, Agrath Earthshade to finish off the skull and blend it in. And then the one thing that bothered me the most was the rear... Um, suspension that holds the the rear wheels the black looked cool and it made it really popped but it kind of it looked too good it looked too new um 
So I'm going to touch it up with some dry brush of the lead belcher. Um, just kind of give it that metallic look. And then I'm going to go over, um, go over that and give it a rust effect later. Here's the Zandri dust. I'm just trying to take some of the shine off those big wheels. Um, just adds, adds a little bit of depth to it. And then I'll just use the Typhus Corrosion, as I said, to give some rust. Um, just something to kind of break that up. If you look at it, it, it looks too looks too good compared to the rest of it. So um, the Typhus Corrosion is a textured paint, so it really works out well. And then I'll just hit it with some Riser Rust after and give it that little bit of an orangey um, rust effect. As always, shout out to my Patreon members, Chris Smith, Joey Williams, Kristen Stanland, Stephen Mance, William Robinson, Ed Ostrander, Devil's Details Diecast, who sponsored this, Matchbox Garage, Alvarez's Diecast Customs, Jim Silver, and One Time Pledges, Chris Stanifer, Aaron Connard, and Mad Max 454. This is what I started with. This is the end result. Remember, comment down below. You'll automatically get entered to win this fabulous beast. <laughs> and make sure you check out Devil's Details Diecast. The link is down below. Watch all the videos, all the builds, and I'll catch you on the next one.